Hi, I'm Tom Marino. At Cone Resnick, we believe that all citizens need to be informed about the issues that affect their daily lives. That's why we're proud to support the programming produced by Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners in public television. Today's Modern Women next on Caucus New Jersey. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by Virtua, Health First New Jersey, PSE&G, committed to improving New Jersey's economy and strengthening its communities, the Merck Company Foundation, Caldwell College, New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group, auto insurance, homeowners insurance, and banking under the principle of stewardship, Wells Fargo, and by the law firm of Gibbons PC. Welcome to Caucus. I'm Steve Adubato. You know, women today have more responsibility than ever before. That can obviously lead to overwhelming physical and emotional stress here in the studio. To talk about how women can keep it all together, we have Loretta Napolitano as a freelance yoga instructor. Kelly Neerstead, Assistant Vice President for Women and Children's Service Line at Virtua. Dr. Jennifer Ashton, ABC Senior Medical Contributor and Author. And finally, Nan McFall who is a recent retiree in utilizing health and wellness programs. And I want to thank all of you for joining us. Uh, by the way, throughout this program, log on to the website you'll see on the air to get more information. Doctor, I need to ask you right away. We were talking about this before we got on the air. I was saying um, that I'm a little bit under the weather as we do the show. And I was saying, well, you know, last couple of days, getting ready for the show, trying to get healthy, right? <laughs> I could crawl under the covers, yeah. right? And try to shut out the world. My wife, Jennifer, we have a two and a half year old, got an eight year old, a 10 year old, I got a big boy who's away right now, right? But I'm thinking to myself, not away, away, like in prison, away, <laughs> at, away studying abroad, I want to clarify that. But I'm thinking to myself, my wife couldn't do what I just did. Never. Because? It's just not, it, it's not logistically possible. Uh, it's not emotionally or, or psychologically possible. I believe it's not genetically possible. You know, I, I was attracted to the area of women's health and OBGYN because I found when I was in medical school the, the perfect mix. You have incredible medical issues at stake, but women, even at their worst point, at their sickest, at their most vulnerable, without fail, rise to the occasion on all those levels. And um, I think that whether you're a mother, whether you work inside the home or outside the home or not, um, women just respond differently to you know, anything from the common cold to life-threatening illness. And um, I think with grace and with stoicism, but that doesn't mean it's easy. Kelly, jump in here and also define wellness, if you will. Uh, I think wellness is a state of mind. It really is a mind, body, and, sp and spiritual experience for women. Um, it's different things to different people at different stages in their life, but certainly a large part of a woman's life is defined by the role of caregiver. She will always put herself um, at the bottom of the list. So even when there is 30 minutes in a day, which is hard for her to find on any given day, she sometimes feels guilty by giving that time to herself. And it's very guilty. important. Guilty. Yeah, mm -hmm. that she can be doing something else for a family member or anything else in her home that is going to make the life of others around her easier. Um, so there is something to be said about that, even when you say, well, why can't you find 30 minutes in a day? Everyone can find 30 minutes. Well, I might be able to find it, but when I find that 30 minutes, a lot of women don't want to give to themselves. They want to give to someone else, and that's a challenge. And part of it is finding ways in which we can help women feel empowered to take back their wellness, to understand that their physical and emotional well-being is just as important as the rest of the family because, in fact, their physical and emotional well-being impacts their family. It does. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. By the way, Nan, your story. Well, um, for were me... Were you taking care of yourself? Yes. You were? I, I was not on a consistent basis. Um, I knew uh, uh, that I needed to take care of my, my body, but as a mother, a working mother, I took care of the home and do, did what I had to do, pay the bills, all of, those, all of those things. I would take the time to go walk in because I knew that was important for an hour and a half or whatever, but I was not consistent with it because again, time, didn't have the time. Mm -hmm. Working and doing everything that you had to do for yourself and others 
it's hard to fit the time in. And, and, and women, I think we're wired differently. We want to always please others and take care of others to make sure they're okay. If we have that 30 minutes, it's about what can I do for somebody else and not for myself. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. And Loretta, you, this whole yoga thing. Oh, I feel so selfish right now because, yeah. <laughs> first of all, I don't no feel guilt. I don't no feel guilt. guilty at all for well, yeah. taking Women time for myself because if mom's not happy, nobody's happy. Talk about that. Um, my family knows that, oh, let, let her go do yoga. Let her, let her go out for her walk. Let her go do this because when I come in and I'm nicer, everybody's happier. And uh, the whole, all the stress is gone. If the mom's stressed, it just it kind of leaks through everything. It just seeps through the family. I do have to say that I love your column in the Star Ledger about all communication. And the reason I'm saying that is because in addition to teaching uh, yoga, I teach public speaking. And there's a whole yoga in public speaking. I'm forever ripping out your, your, uh, your columns and bringing them in class. We do our yoga exercises. We actually. By the way, notice I never interrupt you when you're raising <laughs> your compliments. No, I'm sorry. it's great. I'm sorry. I bring it in. I rip it out in the morning. I bring it in. But the point is, even in but my. Enough about me. Go ahead. <laughs> even in my do public speaking classes, we do we do yoga. Are you serious? We do. Yes, I have. There's there's a whole. Uh, there's a whole wellness thing going on, like. With that, the yoga it's speaking. It's in the acting classes now because it's calming everybody down. Settling your brain, it's meditation in motion. You know, I'm a not, uh, I'm really a very angry, nasty person. By the way, you said you are nicer when you do yoga. I am. I used to be a lot angrier. Things my husband would do, you know, you're talking about this, the sickness. It's so funny. When my husband is sick, the world stops. Right. He goes into bed. He pulls the shit well, over the cup. My husband was the only one. <laughs> I need soup. Okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, when women are sick, I think they, right. I take Business. Tylenol yeah, and I do everything I have to do. Business as usual. Come you know, on. you know what the analogy is, Steve, is. and this is something that most people can relate to. When you sit on an airplane, and you get the safety instructions. What is, uh, what is the first thing on that video? Security. If the oxygen masks fall down and you are traveling with someone who needs assistance, put your own mask on first exactly. before turning to help you can't someone care else. For others. And this yeah. that's what we're talking about here. If if I same same exact thing, if I don't get my exercise in during the day, I'm not good with my kids, I'm not good with my patients, I'm not good on television, I'm not good with my friends. So you have it's not about being selfish. It's a necessity, but women need a paradigm shift and they need to give themselves permission, That's as exactly we've said. It. As Loretta said, how do you get women to a state where you're at right now? Exactly. How do you let them feel so empowered? And I think you talked about a little bit about that. It's at every single touch point that we can have a conversation with women to make yeah. them feel empowered to take back their, their life, really, to really be involved with wellness. And you said you incorporate that in public speaking and in yoga. I think that's really important that every time you have an opportunity, whether it's seeing a patient in your mm -hmm. practice or in a fitness center mm -hmm. or at the spa, really incorporating that mind-body experience for women, letting them feel that this is important for you to do, not just because it's about you, but it's about so much more than you. And if you don't take care of yourself, you can't be the best that you can be for others. Yeah. And that is at the core of what makes women feel important at, at times. But having, having a, I'm sorry, go ahead, man. But also, you, you also have to teach your, your family, get your That's family right. involved. What does that mean? Meaning that um, if the dog needs to be walked, you don't have to be the one to walk it all the time. Get someone else to do it. If the laundry has to be taken out, get the children involved. Mm -hmm. Setting the table, cleaning the table. Mm -hmm. We think we can do it all. And uh, that's a lot of stress when we take all of this at home and then have sure. to go out and come back and work. So we need to teach our children. Husbands, become a part of the family, the family as a whole, that's a whole and unit. And by the way, Steve, I, I think that it's not just women who make it hard on themselves. I think in time, at times society does as well. I think people can be very judgmental sure. about women and, you know, there's, are you a good mother? Are you a good working mother? Are you a good wife? Are you a good friend and sister? Whose standards are these? And, you know, people are trying to do the best they can. And, you know, if, if you do, uh, you know, I work, Nan worked, plenty of, uh, working mother today is, is very, very common, again, whether you work in or outside the home. But how many times do we feel that pressure of, oh, I gotta, I gotta pick up the kids at school, because sure. if I don't pick up the kids at school, I'm not a good mother. And who's saying that? You're, I mean, maybe not our kids. Right. <laughs> well, I see it with my wife all the time. Yeah. I mean, yoga, yeah. yoga kind of helps you combat all that stuff. It really kind of eases your mind. I got my kids used to being, I'm the last mom to show up to pick them up. It's like, don't even look for me first. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. You know, I'm you the, the expectation. expectation. <laughs> uh, 
and I think the main obstacle with everything is time, yep, really absolutely. finding the time. But mm -hmm. you have to find these pockets of time all day. When my daughter took her figure skating lessons, I would bring my mat. I'd go find a corner. Mm -hmm. Instead of sitting there talking or whatever, lay my mat down, I'd be doing exercises. People look at me like I'm strange, but you know now, it, now it's kind of all the rave. Uh, and you, if you don't find those pockets of time, you're never going to do it, right. even if I'm home. You know, you put the water on to boil for pasta, but I take my yoga mat and I lay sure. down. Of course, my daughter, the, the water's boiling. I'm like, <laughs> get up and I pour cold water in it so I get like 10 more, more minutes time. before it boils. And I lay down, and I do my little routine there. You don't have to leave the house for a lot of mm -hmm. things. Or like you said, as simple as going out for a little 20 minute yeah, walk. Exactly, and you know what? And when you retire, as a retiree, you have this extra time, all of this time, and you need to fill it with something that you enjoy and that's something that's going to be, um, that's going to be healthy. You mean like and Tai Chi? Oh, uh, that's me, mm, Tai Chi. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Where's Tai Chi come tai into your world? Tai Chi uh, came into my world when I was um, um, asked to go to the, invited to the health center, virtual health center. Did you and know about Tai Chi? I knew about it. I had seen um, it in movies, you know, right. little snippets of it in movies, in the parks, or whatever. And I thought it was so beautiful. It was an art that I really thought I really wanted to do. And when I um, joined the, the center, first class I saw that I could have taken was to take was Tai Chi. And I've been doing it now for two years. I love it. It's very slow moving. Anybody who can move can do Tai Chi. And you work at your own pace. And if your body feels uh, pain, you're to stop. Okay, it, it's it's very relaxing. What's it done for you? Um, I think it's helped me to lose some weight, um, to look at the numbers that I needed to look at, and that was the weight gain, uh, blood pressure, and um, just I think it slowed me down and relaxed me. I, I'm in a more I I don't feel so edgy. Is that right? Yeah. I, I want to interject one thing here. A study I read said that for 53% of Americans, I'm not putting down Tai Chi. Tai Chi is great. It's great. But for 53% yes. of people, slow kinds of things, even slow yoga, actually makes them nervous and stressed. They is don't right? like it. When I always encourage people to find the yoga that's right for them because right. there's restorative, there's Anasura, mm. there's relaxing yoga. I tend more toward the power yoga, vinyasa yoga. So do a lot of type A people whose brains are always going. So for them to go to a slow class is going to stress them. You know, you know what's so interesting to me, and by the way, log on to the website you see on the screen to get more information. I'm, I'm curious about something, and help us uh, jump in here as well, Doctor. We said this be before we got on the air. We talked about this, and I want to jump into it more. Um, I mean, I feel stress. I feel the need to uh, work exercise into my routine. I feel the pressure to to balance a lot of things. I feel the pressure of the fact that I don't feel physically great right now, but I have to be here. Mm -hmm. But you're saying it's still different for men and women. I'm not going to play the game of whose job is hard. I'm not going to do that. Steve, well, why didn't your family come into that for you? Did you just not include it, or is it just not at the top of the That's list? That's interesting. Um, mm -hmm. You're right. <laughs> and because that's where I think that doesn't right. make you a bad parent, right. by the way. I think that just you know that it's she's more male. Right. It's you know that your wife is looking after your children, right. and for women who are mothers or who are at the hub of their family unit, even if they're not mothers, they might be the sandwich generation who's responsible for a parent or a sibling or or a sick friend. That's the first thought that comes into our mind. She the first thought. She goes there immediately where you didn't even have to ask. She understood implicitly that that was your role, that you were going to go to work, that that was who you were, and you were going to make it happen. So part of what she does, whether you see it or not, is try to make it as easy as mm -hmm. possible for you to make you be able to go to work and for you not to have to worry about it. But that stress still weighs on her. Mm -hmm. So if she can't find a release for what that is like, that is manifested stress for her. And how that, how that manifests itself can be physical, emotional, uh, it manifests in it's a lot so of different ways. Mm -hmm. but, I, but I think that women are inherently programmed to be multitaskers mm -hmm. and to do what we've all said, to do it all, to do yoga at a figure skating practice and to work when sick like you do. But we're primarily focused always on the needs of the people who depend on us. Always. But that see, never goes away. You see, you're saying programmed, right? But it, it, but the programming doesn't always, the program doesn't run so well. Meaning, you're saying programmed. 
but it breaks down. It absolutely does. And that's the wellness down. part, right? That's right. the wellness part. Or lack thereof. Where you know we have a gap in time where you know women are of their childbearing age and they spend a lot of time and attention on their children. And there's a gap in age, and we spoke about this before the show, somewhere around 40 to 60 years of age, where women really aren't connected to health care or wellness for that matter. They're very involved in the lives of their families or maybe their lives of their own careers, building their careers, whatever that is for them. Um, their only connection is usually once a year with their GYN, if they take the time to do right. that. They're not very focused on their own wellness and their own health care. And when we're seeing these women, it's later on in their lives when they're in their 60s and where they're starting to, they've already manifested some of these conditions of all the stress that's been there. And we've lost a really big opportunity yeah. to keep these women well. And by the time we're seeing them in healthcare systems, they're sick. They're the type 2 diabetics. They've got cardiac disease. They're overweight. We want to catch these women far before that, when they're just out of childbearing age, when they've already built a relationship with their OB or their GYN and continue that relationship in those years of 40 to 60. And that's where the wellness piece comes in. Yeah. That's where the piece about keeping um, the primary care docs and the GYNs connected to uh, issues that are important to women. A lot of times women will see a primary care physician um, and they're overlooking maybe some of those touch points that where they can be having great conversations with women about what they need to, what they need to do to keep themselves healthy. Um, and that's a big part of medicine today. That primary care doc is going to be critical in the way we deliver care, and we have to keep them up on the women's issues now. And this, that's another example of what I mean by sometimes these constraints aren't only placed by us, they're placed by society. In some cases, they're placed by the medical community, ironically, that should be charged with helping these women helping us stay healthy. In, in my second book, Your Body Beautiful, I talk about that black hole, as I call it, from the last contraction to the first hot flash. Sure. And where, where are we? We're lost. Right. And, and women are kind of put on autopilot. Absolutely. If you're not going to be reproducing, most OBGYNs really just, are you good? OK, here's your pap smear. I'll see you in a year. And that just speaks to, even in the medical community, as women's health experts, we are we're not even focused on that woman as much as we should be. Absolutely. Those are the years where we should be saying, you might not even be at the halfway point. You right. could live to 90. You're at the halfway mark at 45. You want to get in the best shape, mental and physical, as possible. And we overlook the mental as much Absolutely. or more as we overlook the physical. And what advice would you have for uh, a woman who's approaching retirement age or just retired? Because you're making the most of your you know, retirement. Is that fair to say now? Yes. Okay. I would say. What advice would you have for some women watching right now or the men uh, in their lives who are, are concerned about them? Well, I think we are accountable for our lives and we have to take that seriously. And you have this time to do something for yourself. Get out there, enjoy life. Find something that's going to benefit you whether it's Tai Chi, whether it's walking, whether uh, starting a book club, uh, whatever you... How to start a book club? Part of yoga. Oh. I'm assuming part of wellness. Wellness. Okay, you, you're, you're meeting other people, you're, fr you're meeting friends, you're sharing, uh, you're uh, becoming interested in other books, not just books that you like because the of mind, the book body club. body part. Exactly, exactly. You're, you're, you're in touch of other people besides yourself. And you talked about um, in doing Tai Chi that part of um, the experience is the community. That when you come into the Tai Chi class, you're looking for those people around you that you've built a community with. And that is very much part of the, the mind experience, part of that relationship building that's so important for women. Extended women family. are all about relationships. Yeah. Yeah. So Extended if you can find family. a community mm -hmm. that gets you back, so if, if that's the link that gets you back to the gym and keeps you going to Tai Chi or to yoga, is that social relationship, that's as good as the exercise. That's that benefit right. is as good as the exercise that you're exactly. doing. I'm curious about this in the few minutes we have left. How much of this is a product of economics or socioeconomic class? Meaning, um, I don't want to be advocating, hey, go to a spa, you know? Mm -hmm. um, you know uh, because that's a good again, point. someone's sitting there going, well, I can't afford a spa. Right. I mean, I, I um, sometimes I, 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 I go with my dad to the, uh, to the Y, our local Y, because he likes to swim. And I see a, a class that starts after this adult swim, this open adult swim. And it is amazing to me. Um, I would say the average age is 80 of the people who are going into this exercise class in the pool, mm -hmm. disproportionately women. Mm -hmm. And they're doing all kinds of stuff. And I'm sure, and I think they go into mid-90s. 
point I'm making is that that why is accessible to everyone. And whatever people do, it has to be accessible. So wellness for everyone, right? Well, I was going to say, I worked at YMCA's for 30 years. And I just love them because it is very accessible. Scholarships are available, all ages, all body types, everything. It's amazing. I watch the right. same exercise classes. Right. I teach a cycle class. I teach the yoga class, all different ages. I always say that yoga is for everybody and every body mm -hmm. because you'd be amazed at the different sizes and ages and people coming in. Mm -hmm. And yes, it's very affordable. There are some places out there now charging $20, $25 per yoga class, right. which is kind of insane for most people. Well, what, what advice do we have for folks who are watching right now and say, listen, I want to get on this wellness thing? Some women well, who say, I want to get in on it. I, I mean, you don't need a floor to do yoga or, I mean, all, all you need is a floor to do yoga or Tai Chi. And I think that, that it is, you, you're right, Steve, you know, wellness can be expensive, but illness is more expensive. Absolutely. And that's where we need to prioritize as an individual, as a society, and we need to make it a priority and find ways uh, whether it's a why, whether it's if you can afford a spa, go for it. If you can't, get a mat and get, use your floor. Or, there's classes uh, walk. or, or walk. 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 Right. Walk, walk. But walk there are yoga tai Chi classes in the park. Online. Yeah, Tai Chi in the park. Because my but daughter takes her computer, she just sets it up in front of her. She finds yeah, yoga classes right. online and she's just doing it. It's right. totally free. But more and more, are, are health and hospital systems saying, hey, this is our business too? Absolutely saying this is our business too. I mean, why really, is it your business, by the way? Because I think that the way healthcare Wellness. is moving and it has to move to this is we're really trying to keep people out of the hospital. We're, we have to keep them well. We have to make a change here in the society. Healthcare as we know it today is broke and we need to fix it. Um, you know, Virtua's mission is to help you be well, get well, and stay well. Mm -hmm. um, and we have to live that mission every day. So just waiting um, for that episodic acute care episode. Um, isn't doing justice to our community and to the nation as a whole. We really need to start very early and have a real concerted effort to keep people well. Um, that's our job. That's what we do as healthcare providers. Um, and and that I would also say that in, in our culture, in medicine, we have a different paradigm. In Western medicine, most of the time, we treat disease. In non-Western medicine, uh, wellness is promoted and prevention is the key and that's the goal. So I think we need to come together, you know, on a, on a philosophical level, on an intellectual level, on a professional level, on a personal level, and we need to integrate a lot more mind-body, Western-Eastern, wellness instead of disease because that, that does have to be the future. Mm -hmm. And then you believe people watching right now, they need to take control. Oh yes, absolutely. Um, your body is a gift. You only have one body. It's up to you to take care of it. And say a woman right now says, oh, I would love to do that now, but I got to take care of my kids. I got to take care of my husband. I got to take care of my family. Well, uh, if they need you, you have to be healthy in order to, um, to be, uh, uh, be effective in that family. And as I said before, um, I think a mother or a woman needs to make sure that the family is also um, helping, helping her. And she she is pretty much the boss. And she can direct these activities. As I said before, train them, teach them. You feel empowered. Yeah, she's not a, to take right. it all we, on. We have that power. Now we just have to use it to our advantage. <laughs> I notice my, my wife will often um, talk to our two boys, our eight and ten, as we do this program, uh, you know, about getting the table ready for dinner and. Right. Um, and I think they think, well, if she doesn't, if they don't do it, she will. And I, I, I want to say to her, just don't do it. Right, but, but, but she has to realize also, as do, I have a son, I, I have a teenage son I, and a daughter, you're, you're leading by example. It's not just taking care of yourself, but you're showing your son that, you know what, it's okay for moms to exercise. So when right. he's a husband, That's absolutely. right, so, yeah. Well, listen, um, Jennifer is for you, my wife, and all the other <laughs> women. You've got to take care of yourself because you've got to yeah. take care of the rest of us. Take care of yourself, all the women. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Now, let's continue the conversation about this and other important topics and issues on Facebook. Visit my page at facebook.com slash Steve Adubato, PhD. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence, and 13 for WNET, NJTV, and WHYY.
Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by Virtua, Health First New Jersey, PSE&G, committed to improving New Jersey's economy and strengthening its communities, the Merck Company Foundation, Caldwell College, New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group, auto insurance, homeowners insurance, and banking under the principle of stewardship, Wells Fargo, and by the law firm of Gibbons PC. Promotional support provided by NJ Biz, All Business, All New Jersey, The Star Ledger, and NJ.com, Everything Jersey, and by New Jersey Monthly, the magazine of the Garden State, available at newsstands. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios. Seeing science in action makes students realize they can learn. What is that working on call? Elizabeth. With the right tools, it's easy to motivate students. Students need to know science to succeed in the global economy. That's why NJE established the Center for Teaching and Learning. To give teachers the training to make science come alive and to keep New Jersey schools among the best in the nation. That's why we are so proud to teach in New Jersey's public schools.